hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, the only reason I am uh, somewhat dismissing Mrs. Uh, Cannon for these things is, depending on how this encounter ends up, you might not necessarily want to think that they're friends. Um, you know, if you end up actually getting into combat with this thing. It's up to you, of course, but, uh, yeah. Dismiss it, yes, dismiss, yes, yes, it's a thing. Hello, how are we all doing? Are we all well? It's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these. Um, my fault, well, a wedding's fault, and then subsequently my fault. But other than that, um, yeah, may have to do a bit of a recap. Generally speaking, um, for those of you who haven't been here at all, um, what these streams are is we are playing through the Forest of Doom, Choose Your Own Adventure Fighting Fantasy Book by Ian Livingstone. And by we, I mean you. You are playing through this book, and I am illustrating your playthrough. You're playing as a character called Pal, um, the goblin friend, as seen on the right here, drawn by the excellent Miss. Um, and yeah, we're going all right. We've been through the Forest of Doom once, and we're going back around again. We haven't found anything we're looking for yet, because we are looking for two halves of a hammer. Um, the Hammer of Gillibrand to save the Dwarves of Stonebridge, who are currently in a bit of a civil war, not realising that trolls are coming to kill them, so we need to get them together um, and be friends. Um, <laughs> your art is very good, Miss, and it's very cool and very nice. I was just saying that I, I don't want feelings to be hurt through the medium of play, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we've done a lot of things. Last time we bought some more stuff from the shop because we managed to get all the way to Stonebridge without finding what we wanted, so we went back to Yastromo, the uh, starting point, and bought a few more magical items. I think some nose plugs and various other bits and bobs. Um, we then saw a crow who told us to head north from the point that the crow was. We found some hobgoblins who we hid in a bush from until we jumped out and smooched them and then ran away. Um, then there was a hole, which you went in, saw that there was slime and left. And now there's an ogre. So, you've thrown your torch into the cave that the ogre exists in. And there's also a small wicker cage in there. Um, with some sort of animal jumping up and down in it, apparently. Some sort of creature. Um, and yes, you, you decided to step in. Your last action two weeks ago was to step into the cave and ask for your torch back. So, yeah. Original sketches were just Pal and Ogre facing each other down. The idea struck you this morning. It's not happening, it's not going to hurt your feelings so right? That's, I know, I'm just saying. You, look, you yesterday you got attached to the scroll. I don't want to damage that sort of sensitivity, you know? I'm not going to hurt people's feelings, certainly not deliberately. Um, but... I know you're hormonal, that's why I'm trying to take it gently. Um, so anyway. Uh, let's try being try. <laughs> the worst thing to say in that situation. Um, I haven't clicked on this for a bit, so let's just see what happens. Yay, it works. So, what do we have in our possession at the moment? Um, wow, okay, that, <laughs> that was blocked. <laughs> Hormones was fine. <laughs> but the rebuttal was not. <laughs> So anyway, yes, we are here, um, and by here I mean here. Forgive any technical difficulties, I'm switching over to Clip Studio. This is the first one of these streams I've done in Clip Studio. Um, so let's see how well it uh, handles so many layers. Um, hopefully better than Photoshop. I know the save times on the... Uh, Clip Studio are much lower, but uh, also got to get sort of pencils and things sorted out. Turns all that out. Um, yeah, so we were. This is where the yoga was, and this is where Pal is. There, he threw the tor torch in. The torch was extinguished, and then the yoga wants to come and come out and say, uh, "What are you doing?" Um, or you stepped in rather, and the yoga is not not too pleased about this. I don't know if this is like a proper continuation or whatever. Um, not my best drawing, it must be said, but here we are. Um. <laughs> so, there's an ogre staring you down with a brandishing a stone and club. What do you want to do? 
We start this off with a difficult choice. What to do, what to do. I also forgot about the bunny slippers, so there, that's a thing that's there. And this is vibrating because something's jumping up and down in it. Uh, he's holding a water bowl for whatever this is. Um, I should get the book, really. That's probably going to help. Um... Yep, here we are. So... Oh, look at that. We're literally... On, on the page that we're at is the page with the ogre, and just above it is a gremlin slashing you in the, in the ankles with a knife. That's already happened. Ah, uh, happy days. Something more like that. Let's try and clean this up a bit. Sploosh. I have been doing art today, but I haven't been drawing, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, actually drawing things from scratch might be a bit uh, bit rough today, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, you also gave him sideburns, didn't you? Give him sideburns. Always bad with the teeth that come out of the, the bottom. Doesn't. Never looks right. Because there is a picture of this in the book, but it's it looks like Hagrid, and I thought that's that's not an ogre. That's boring. Let's come up with something better. Given that this the story. Oh yes, to remind you, um, the. Yes, Stromo told you at some point that the two pieces of the hammer were taken by two goblins um, because they couldn't decide who should have the hammer, so they, one of them took the head and one of them took the handle. Um, as a consequence, there's, we have encountered several instances of things that are like goblins in this game, just to kind of get your hopes up and then dash them. So we've met some gremlins, we've met hobgoblins, um, so it's kind of fortuitous that you guys chose to play as a goblin, because it's sort of like... I don't know, theming. Hello, Kiro! How you doing? Uh, what is in our infantry? Good question. I was going to say that and then I got sidetracked. Um, we have a sword. We have a potion of anti-poison. We have boots of leaping. Holy water, rope of climbing, potion of luck, the squirrel helmet of bitchin' stats. That's this here. Yeah, that's the helmet there. Um, we have an arrow, um, a silver necklace, which is worth nine gold pieces, a bar of gold, which is worth 21 gold pieces, um, some bits of clay from a smashed hand. There was a clay figurine of a hand at one point that got smashed. Um, a potion of plant control, a net of entanglement, fire capsules, and nose filters. That's what you have. I can tell you what any of those items do, because the game says that you, there's a label on it, so... <laughs> so yeah, they're the things you have at your disposal and are on the right. Um, poorly illustrated, but uh, there nonetheless. <clears throat> Is it cleaning up bunny slippers? They must be like shrew slippers or something. Um, so yes, you're in a bit of a bit of a pickle. Um, we'll get turned into jam. Who's jam? What what's going on with jam? Um, so the votes are in. <laughs> we have become the pet of the ogre. We have uh, tackle that bee. Um, I don't know what's going on, but sure tackle. Um, and hold up necklace and point to torch trade. Um, so just to reiterate, because some people did come in slightly later after I'd explained what's going on, we are stood um, in the doorway, or the cave entrance, of the ogre's abode. We threw a torch in there, um, the ogre extinguished it, and the last thing that Pal did was to step into the 
into the cave and say, can I have my torch back? And the ogre is, is looking mad at you and is brandishing the club. The stone club that is around their belt. I don't know how effective a stone club is. It'll probably just smash as soon as you hit it, but I don't know. Um, and there's also something in this wicker thing. Some sort of pet. Or some sort of thing that the ogre considers a pet, anyway. So this is the problem with these streams when there's only four people here. <laughs> One quarter of the vote is tries. <laughs> Ooh, hello. Ah, ooh, 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 ooh. Buttons, buttons. So are we all still good with our uh, votes? Because that does mean um, we're going to tackle this thing. We're going to jump in and try and fight it. Stab the ogre in a certain area of the face. What, what particular certain area? <laughs> Let's have a look, see what the book says. Oh, I do need to get my map up. My, my secret background map. Okay, cool. Face balls? What? <laughs> do, do ogres have face balls? Is that a thing I'm missing? Ooh, that's not an ogre. Hooray, I lost the page. That's fine. There it is. You were trying to be nice because of Crow. What was it? Stab the ogre in a certain area of the face. Oh, I see. I see. Um, well, you're gonna have to. Be, it's gonna be quite a jump to get up there. It's gonna be tricky. I might give you the opportunity to do that if you engage it in combat after a couple of turns, once you've uh, sort of got the hang of starting to fight it. And <laughs> gut the oak. <laughs> so we've got um, club me daddy. I'm not entirely sure what that instruction is. Um, tackle, gut, or trade. So generally speaking. Um, such a shame we don't own shoes that would allow us to do a big jump. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, can you see my cursor? Yes, you can. Um, right, so... The votes are in. You're going to attack the ogre. So, let's let's go to combat. The most thrilling part of these adventures. Um, so, the way this works, there's... Both of you have a skill score. Um... Interestingly enough, both eight. Um, so for the purposes of this argument... Um, ah, I didn't get natural 69. Um, how much is the thing for the thing? Uh, hmm. Twelve. Cool. Good. Right. Um, oh, even lower. And uh, what am I doing? Stamina. Stamina. Um Yeah. So I forgot what I just said. What did I just say? Twelve, I think. Yeah, twelve. So the enemy has twelve st stamina. This is the ogre. And this is Pal. Uh, and we have, what do we have? We have 19 stamina. So. Um, Thunder Kira is thundering. Oh, I thought you said you love Thunder Kira, like Thunder was an adjective. There's normal Kira, and then there's Thunder Kira. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so just re just remember, um, you guys are in control of the dice here, and you are also in control of running away at any point, if you so desire. The cave entrance is open, you're welcome to flee. Um, there will maybe instances in this game where you can't, but in this case there's no reason not to. Um, so yeah, if it's looking looking a bit grim, you can uh, 
You can run away. Right, so the way this works is uh, you roll 2d6, one for you and one for, well, one pair for you and then another pair for the ogre. Um, you add those values to your stat, your skill scores and um, why did I do it this way around? It's usually Chibi and Dark who roll. You, anybody's welcome to roll. Um, I think I've done this the wrong way around from how I usually do it. So let's sort this out. 12... And basically, whoever has the highest roll in that particular round um, wins and scores two damage points to their opponent. Um, that's stamina. That's this bit. So this is hearts. Um, so for example, um, we just rolled two eights. So we add that to eight. That's sixteen. Add that to eight. That's sixteen. That's a draw. Nothing. Nothing happens. Um, so yeah. But if your yours would have been higher, you would have done two damage, and if theirs would have been higher, they would have done two damage to you. Um, again, you may flee at any given point, so long as you tell me. I'm not going to do it automatically, you can die. Um, but given that you're in control of the dice, all you have to do is stop rolling and I won't carry on. So yeah, there's a chink. So you're attacking this ogre. Um, it's quite big. He's got a massive club. Um, the first round, you go for a strike with the legs, but he manages to successfully sort of knock you out of the way. It doesn't cause any damage, but it's enough to uh, to swat you from your original position. Um, oh, two sixes. Look at that. That's that's a twenty, and that's not two sixes. So that's automatically you score a couple of points. You you, you nick him in the legs, get him in the knee, um, causes him to limp around a little bit. Um, Yeah. Congrats, you score a hit. Um, stab him in the specific face area. Um, so anyway, I'll let you... You can roll for luck um, if you... Hereafter, because you've slowed him down slightly now. Um, you can roll for luck and cause additional damage. Um, which will decrease your luck by one point if you are successful. But will increase damage by a hefty amount if you manage to stab him in uh, unpleasant areas um oh yeah that's that's fair enough so uh, a seven brings us up to 15 and a three brings him down to 11 do you want to roll for luck hello emily how you doing congratulations on the low roll the bread pudding recipe might have been right <laughs> a tablespoon of milk that's all you needed What happened? We're attacking the ogre right now, which is why I said <clears throat> don't get too attached to it. Um, we are currently causing it damage. We have taken two points of health off it already, and I'm giving you the opportunity now that you've slowed it down by slashing, in, slashing them in the leg. Um, if you want to roll for luck so that you can jump up and try and stab them in an unpleasant place in the face, um, you're welcome to. Um, if you are unsuccessful, you will miss your attack. So you have to roll under your luck with 2d6. Your luck is currently five. So it's unlikely that you'll be successful, but if you're unsuccessful, you know. Look, you drew a nice picture, miss, and I just didn't want you to be upset. <laughs> Try, your, your jokes are always so... Like Emily's just come in here. <laughs> Emily's just entered. Doesn't know the context for these things. <laughs> oh dear, it's like bread whore all over again. I know you don't need context. That's not the thing. <laughs> I just don't want people to get the wrong end of the stick with you, you know? <laughs> Look, Oob, stop giving me ideas of things to draw. <clears throat> uh, well, that's significantly over your luck, if that's what you indeed ro were rolling for. Um, no one actually said whether or not they wanted to roll the luck, but... Uh, well, Emily's, uh, Emily asked whether or not... Or what the luck roll was. <laughs> I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and just say that's the next attack round. So you do two damage... 
here. Tell me explicitly whether or not you wish to roll for luck later. Um, this is another slash to the other leg. Slows him down a little bit more. Doesn't actually appreciate it. Uh, appreciably change the uh, the fight in any way, but it's getting the ogre's getting angry. Started thrashing around, ba bashing furniture and all that sort of stuff. Didn't expect quite such a, a nuisance um, of a fight. So what have we got? We have ten, so that's eighteen, um, and then eight, which gives us sixteen. So you get a, get another hit in. Wow, you are surprisingly lucky, given that you have the same skill. Um, now, do you wish to roll for luck or not? <laughs> I need to explicitly ask this. No luck? You're not doing luck? If not, we can just carry on with the fight. You don't have to roll for luck, I'm just giving you the opportunity. You can do significant damage if you decide to uh, see whether Pal is going to jump up and attack the ogre. Um, or just attack regularly. But if you jump and miss, though, might be a bit, might be a bit of an issue. Only attack, only attack, no luck. Righty ho. Well, you managed to get half the health down. More dice rolling. That's getting scars and scratches and all sorts of things. Uh, a nine brings us up to 17 there. Just stabbins. <laughs> Also, Emily. Emily. Emily's had good rolls today. Oh, look at that. This, this ogre's having no luck whatsoever, are they? Um, <laughs> it's a little bit tired. It's, it's had a busy day, um, this ogre. And, yeah. So, you, you guys said no luck, so we're carrying on. So, this is the baseline, I should say. <laughs> Misses just bad at dice game. Well, they're rolling under things, which is in D and D you have to do that a lot to roll under stats. That took me a while to work out. That was a good thing. Four and four, marvelous. Sixteen. It's going down. <laughs> Your lead is decreasing. Look at this, double six, it's gone. <laughs> Add some drama to the event. It's just thrashing around, it's getting very annoyed, this thing. Um, that's an eight. Um, 16, draw. All score draw. Um, this time you, you decide to, you, you, you found a, a tried and true method of getting it in the legs um, but the ogres also worked that out and as a consequence has decided to uh, pick up the remnants of a table that they smashed and use it as a makeshift shield to block its feet so we're going to start interfering with the actual drawing now <laughs> what have we got here we got an 11 which is pretty good 19 and that's a 5 which brings 13 that's down to 2 you definitely managed to avoid or get around the shield. Um, this is not the first time you fought something larger than you. Um, and Pal knows how to use their height disadvantage as an advantage. Be speedy. Thief class, as it were, but bard. This ogre, my word. Uh, <laughs> that's a six, brings 14. That's your lowest roll yet. And that's a 10. It is 18. The ogre finally gets wise, and rather than using the bit of table as a shield, just throws the bit of table in your face, knocks you back over the other side of the place, and uh, docks your health a bit. <laughs> Miss, you were the chosen one. Uh, that's a 6, which is 14 again, and that's a 9, which is uh, 17, which is, means you get hit again. Uh, more furniture comes hurtling your way. Chairs, uh, books, smaller side tables, um, a drinks cabinet. doesn't have any drinks in it, it's just there. Presumably stole it from a merchant that was passing through or something. Um, yeah, 
Bang, bang, crash, crash, wallop. Um, drama. Yes. Uh, I've lost track of what rolls are what now. Um, are those last two rolls the thing? Because if that's the case, we get we get hit again. And what did we have? There was eight for us. No, six for us. This is the problem, is while I'm doing stuff, chat's actually moving on and I don't know what's happening. We get hit again. Okay, cool. 13. Um, more furniture. You don't know where they're getting all this furniture from. There's little crevices in the cave where there's just... Clearly, this this ogre has a bit of a penchant for furniture. Um, X to X. They once uh, kidnapped somebody from the Antiques Roadshow that was passing by. Um, okay, so this is what? Seven? Seven for us, eight for him? Yeah, so there was a seven here, though, which means we're up to 15. And then an eight. Um, 60. Putting up a fight. Putting up a fight, this thing. Starting to run out of furniture, just moving on to rocks now. Like, realise that a stone club is a bit unwieldy, throwing things much more effective. Um... What is happening? You have equal skill. It's, you know, equal chance for one of you to hit each other. Hello, Plamps. How you doing? We're attacking an ogre. We did very well to start with, but it's starting to go downhill. And I keep having to resize the thing. <laughs> uh, pal, I'm going to change the... Um... Go down here. Oops. Hope you don't mind. See, so we're just rolling two d6s for the purposes of a fight. You literally need to get one more hit. If you'd rolled for luck, who knows? Uh, that's an eight, that's a 16. You're getting a lot of eights. I was expecting more sevens, really. And that's four. Which brings to 12, which is a hit. Oh, wrong way around. And the ogre comes crashing to the floor, breaking. Um, what nobody else realises is an extraordinarily expensive uh, side table. Um, valued at 12,000 gold co coins, but, uh, you know, it's, it's in bits now. Um, Pal wouldn't know that anyway. So, yeah, we, we have successfully, or you have successfully managed to kill the ogre. Um, after taking a little bit, few wounds, few wounds here and there. Um, let me adjust that. Excellent. Um, da -da 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 -da. There it is. Adjusted. You're now on almost half health. Right. You have slain the ogre. What, what is there to do? Um, right. You now have an opportunity to look around the cave. What do you see? I'll tell you what you see. Once I get to the page. Three, 385 or 358. That's not confusing. Um, right. Right. As you, you look around the cave, you don't see anything um, immediately that jumps out to you, although there may be more stuff on closer inspection. You do, however, see that the cave is vibrating quite heavily. There's something definitely jumping around in there rather manically. Do you want to have a look at the cage or do you want to have a look around? Um, actually, I might as well give you the opportunity to look around while you're here, because why would you only have the option to do one of these things? Um, so you do look around. So we're not here voting all day. Um, there's not an awful lot of interest after the ogre's been smashing around while fighting you. Um, there's a bit of a bed, some jars with nothing in it, a uh, broken table and chair. That's basically all that's immediately visible. But on a shelf above the bed, you do notice a small silver box. So that's it, you have a silver box on a ledge, or you have the thing jumping around in the cage, or you can just leave. Um, so let me set up the vote for that. Uh, 
The slippers jump out to you. Uh, this pal's costume is going to get more and more eccentric. Um, what? Ah, oh, let's try it, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, let me get my map up so that I know what to turn to if I do lose the page. Because I'm like that. Hey. Alright, cool, that's that. Move you over here, and we are currently there by the Augur. In the Augur's cave, which is an unnecessarily complicated part of the book, uh, given sort of what's here. Basically, two things to look at. Um, right, what have we got? We have. Uh, there's only four people. What? Five people watching? Four or five? I think Oobs is doing cooking. Um, oh, Pramus is here as well, of course. Um, right. So yes, just to reiterate, uh, you're in this cave. There is a wicker cage. You cannot immediately see what's in it, but something is definitely jumping around. Um, and the yoga was going to it with a water bowl. Um, the water bowl is unremarkable, by the way, and got smashed in the fracas. And on top of a stone outlet, outlet, um, you know, overhang shelf, basically, uh, there's a silver box. Right, what have we got? We have Fist the Box, Boxing Day. Take box, take slippers, and tap cage with flat of sword. Um, secure box in our inventory, then check the thing in the cage. So generally speaking, we want to take the box, to not necessarily look in it, um, and then see what's in the cage, basically. Um, so hang on, let me have a look at some stuff, just so I know what's going to happen when you do these things. Okay, um, but do, do. I think I know what happens, but I do want to be sure, just in case. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Just trying to keep track. Right. Okay, dokie. So, you need to get up and make breakfast, Blair. By that you mean coffee and eat the banana bread you made last night. Ooh, banana bread. I've never actually had banana bread, but it sounds nice. Um, <laughs> take a box set cage of lice. <laughs> Significant jump. Um, but I think, generally speaking, take the box, yeah? And then investigate cage. That seems to be the gist. Um, so, okay, so you, you pick up the silver box, you put it in your backpack, it is uh, secure and closed, it won't come open in your backpack. Um, but it's there. Um, I will have to probably draw that at some point, but I'll write it in the inventory for now. Um, it's there, small, sits in there. And uh, you walk up to the cage. I will probably have to draw something akin to this. You walk up to the cage, to have a look and see what's inside. And inside you see a small uh, creature with greeny brown skin, um, which you recognize immediately to be a goblin. Um, around the neck of the goblin is hanging a leather strap on which uh, hangs a thin black rod. Um, let me... Uh, let me just turn that down. That's a bit better.
Uh, what are we doing? Um, what are we talking about? We have votes for Ask Goblin to exchange Rod for Freedom, um, one for Burn Cage, and one for Ask Goblin for Rod. Uh, we'll get to it eventually. Um, how am I going to... I don't know how I'm going to draw a goblin in a wicker cage. <laughs> Given that it is in a wicker cage that you couldn't clearly see into. So... Did I mention I haven't drawn anything today? You know, for somebody who's, who's sort of made their sort of signature Twitch drawing thing to be based around these draw-throughs, I'm, I'm really bad at keeping track of chat while these happen. So obviously the cage is roughly your height. I am thinking of um, sort of slightly shaking up the uh, the whole Twitter schedule and the things that we do and things like that, just trying to keep it fresh. Um, not sure precisely how yet, um, but uh, if you guys have any ideas for things you want to see, um, sort of whether to do more game stuff, whether you have you know different drawing stream ideas or um, other bits and bobs, I would like to get a capture card at some point so we can start doing some things on my other computer so we can do sort of music and stuff. Um, but yeah, ideas are always welcome because we have been doing I've been streaming pretty consistently for six, seven months now um, and it's nice to, you know, mix it up a tad every now and then I like how I ask you questions and then don't look at chat. Um, <clears throat> Burn? What? Now you're burning me. Why are you burning me? Um, <laughs> draw a wicker cage with a sign that says Gobo. I mean, you probably could have seen that from the outside, so I doubt that's there. Um, you'd enjoy process videos? Um, like how you storyboard comics or do 3D modeling? Okay, that's interesting. Um, I could do more streams that just revolve around, hey look, I need to make a thing, watch me make the thing. Um, I just feel a little bit sort of guilty that it's not specifically prepared for, you know, streaming enjoyment. It's uh, a kind of subsidiary idea, if that makes sense. No. You know, I always try and make these things a bit catered to you where possible, because... You know, why do things you could do on your own in your spare time in front of other people? when you could do them on your own in your spare time. Um, right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Welcome to the first thing I've drawn today. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII stream, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's send a gravity right.
Long arms and big hands, it's a thing. Um... Whatever. And then there's a thing here, yeah, there's a little... That's how perspective works. Uh, what do we call? Uh, you wouldn't mind possibly sneaky peeks, which would be fun. Uh, that is true. I mean, if I'm working on longer form things, yeah. Is creating streams being really interesting? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I'm just a bit small. A bit low. Just keep accidentally moving the anchor point because shortcuts are different in this to the way they were in Photoshop. Um, the main problem I have with process doing sort of process streams is there's no guarantee anything's going to work. <laughs> Just spend two hours working on a thing that I then throw away. Um, but I suppose that's why I should attempt to make it entertaining in some fashion. Um, also, apologies for not reading any of the other suggestions if they were any because I looked at one and then carried on doing what I was doing <laughs> yeah alright mate listen this is how it's going to go see that ogre I just destroyed yeah right what are we doing we have two for offer freedom for rod one for burn cage um, and one for ask goblin to exchange rod for freedom I think that's three for chatting to the goblin. So Pal says, uh, look, I have a bit of a vested interest in the rod that is currently strapped around your neck. How about you give me that and I'll let you out. Pass it through the bars of the wicker cage and you can go on your way. And the goblin is intensely angry. He's not very, not happy about his current situation whatsoever. Um, but Pal is patient and manages to wait until the thing calms down. You tell it that the ogre's dead and it's free. It can go off to do what it wants. It just has to give you the rod. And eventually it capitulates and says, OK, sure. Um, your dialect is rather different, so you can't communicate particularly well. But nonetheless, um, it passes the rod through the bars. You look at it and it is indeed uh, made of ebony and has G inscribed on the handle, um, as you expected. Which is what Yesromo said it would. And... You happily let them out, and the goblin runs away into the undergrowth before you can do anything. It just flees as quickly as it possibly can. Um, so, yeah. Hang on, one sec, just gonna check some stuff. Um, you also gain a luck point. That's something. You get a bit of luck because you you sort of did things well. Congratulations. Um, I could have eaten him. No, he, he ran away. I think he probably he heard Pal considering that <laughs> the one one of his voices, your voice, sort of slipped out while he was chatting and was like, "Oh, I'm not not sticking around for this." Um, right. So. Cool. So yeah, so you have the silver box in your backpack. You now have the ebony handle. I'll add that to your thing. Congratulations. Half of the uh, adventure is complete. <laughs> Remember, you're looking for the ebony handle and the bronze head of a warhammer, both inscribed with the letter G. So congratulations. Um, yeah. I will have to draw pictures for these things because they will not appear in the overlay. There we are. <laughs> Error, missing images. Um, so yeah, what have we got? Well, what are you, what are you guys? Well, let's let's do the vote.
you're in the cave. The cave is now depopulated. The ogre is dead. The goblin has run away. Um, what would you like to do? Just for reference, this is the map. Um, we're here in this cave. Um, we went past the hole and whatever this was. Oh, the, the hobgoblins. That's where they were. Um, the crow gave us directions. This is Yastromo's tower. Um, we could continue heading north. We could investigate the box we just picked up. Um, there's nothing else of interest in the cave, by the way. Um, you've checked. There's nothing in the cage. Um, nothing Nothing you'd want to pick up anyway. Um, Cockbread? What? <laughs> I lose track of things. Um, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we've encountered at some point. This is the evil lady's house. Um, this is where we got the helmet and the squirrel attacked us for completely unprovoked. Uh, this is where we sent some tree people on their merry way to have fun. Um, this is where we met a, a friendly barbarian who had very nice words for us. Mostly ah. Um, some eels, some vampire bat bats, um, just some crop circles to mark the ways if you wanted to come back here at some point. Some people shot us in the left shoulder here. Um, some people shot us in the right shoulder here. Uh, then there was somebody who took some of our stuff and threatened to turn us to stone if we didn't. We got uh, zapped by a cloud as well. Um, big old forest giant walked past us here. We hid behind some logs. Uh, death hawks. There were some death hawks. They attacked us. Um, <clears throat> we angered a wyvern and then threw a bracelet at him, which we stole from the death hawks. Uh, and then some bandits came along and took a couple of our things. They took pity on us. They were going to take five things, but... Uh, they realised that we were insane and decided to play a recorder in front of them. So, like, you d you don't have anything, do you? Um, Squirrel gave Pal a tiny munchin. Sorry, I thought I I, I initially read that as Tim Minchin. <laughs> it's like, Squirrel gave Pal Tim Minchin. What? <laughs> right. What do we have? We have, as these things go. Back to the gobbo friend. Um, two votes for resting cave, eat some bread, investigate box. Well done on getting the grammar of that correctly. Um, the grammar of it correctly? What? Uh, one for claim property, right to cave, nest, eat two cock breads. I'm assuming, assuming that's try. And open silver box. And one for sleep, munch, investigate box. And one for rest forever. So generally speaking, people want to sleep, have some bread, and then open the box. That's fair enough. Um, so... But uh, I suppose you can only eat one bread at any given time. But theoretically, you could stay here if you wish um, for a bit longer. Um, yeah, just 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 say in chat. Do you want to eat one or one one bit of bread, two bits of bread? It recovers four health per per loaf. You only have six left. Um, not particularly likely you're going to find any more in this place. Also, as usual, I forgot to mention, the music today comes courtesy of Adrian von Ziegler, um, whose music you can find on YouTube, um, which is... who has generously allowed this music to be used um, free from sort of usage rights in these particular scenarios, things like, you know, independently made YouTube videos and streams and things like that, and I always like to shout out um, people who do that, because they're very, very nice. Um... Is the bread banana bread? Uh, I haven't really specified what the food is at all. I just keep saying it's bread. I have no reason it can't be banana bread. So we have two votes for two bread. Every, how about this? We started off with ten, I think. How about every loaf is different? They were, or, you know, Pal decided to have, you know... On a long adventure, you need variety. So there's probably a banana bread in there somewhere. Man cannot survive on bread alone, and I doubt goblin can either. So you need a bit of need a bit of fruit in there. A bit of uh, there's probably some with some raisins or nuts. Lamb bread. Ah, uh, that'll be cheating. I'm watching some people at the moment. Um, 
on Twitch. Part of the Yogscast, doing a thing called the Foley Ship of the Ring, where they're taking the Fellowship of the Ring, removing the audio, and then recording the Foley, the dialogue, and the music from memory. Um, not seriously, I should add. Um, and it's very funny. Um, the dialogue they give the Hobbits is not what... It's very silly. <laughs> but if you watch that, if you watch The Fellowship of the Ring, it's, it's not... It really... It, I don't know. It's kind of got very silly comedy in it, you know? <clears throat> you would ace this pun intended. That's fair enough. Yes, uh, uh, today they recently showed off the uh, the hour and a half's worth of work they've put in already. <laughs> I think they're doing the extended version, so it's it's long. Um, so yeah, okay. So you eat two loaves of bread. That's what we're doing. Um, you have a couple of loaves of bread because it's safe safe place to uh, live for a bit, or you know, buckle down, buckle down, settle down eat bread um that restores eight points of health so it gets you back up to 19 which is where you were before the fight um only two loaves of bread now equivalently the ogre just sort of smashed some loaves of bread out of your hand and ruined them um lord of the rings has its own kind of comedy and people trying to make it grim dark are not valid <laughs> that's fair enough i mean the hobbits in and of themselves and they're you know they're simple folk and they have simple humors um that's kind of nice like in in these sort of grandiose fantasy settings the hobbits are just a nice kind of grounded you know people who just want to live country life you know it's cool which i suppose is the whole point of <laughs> of the lord of the rings is that you know there's this hobbit here who theoretically has no desire for power that's that's the ideal person to take the ring anyway you eat some stuff and then you decide to look at the box let me read what happens when you look in the box um um, that is not the page I was meant to turn to. Okay, so. Here we are. Um, you take, uh, Pal takes the silver box out of their bag. Um, it's light, it doesn't rack or anything like that. Um, and they open the lid to look inside. As they do, uh, a surprisingly large cloud of yellow gas escapes and envelops Pal's face. Um, you, Pal manages to tell immediately that this smoke is not... Uh, not pleasant. <laughs> what do you want to do? There's yellow gas! There was gas in the box. <clears throat> Let's draw that. small silver boxes look like so I was just giving little feats. Um you do have nose filters, yes. That is a thing that is in your inventory. Take that, whatever the name of that um, superhero Marvel artist was, who's known for covering things up. 
Zing. How about that for a zing? What was his name? <laughs> I forgot his name. Rob Liefeld, yes, or Liefeld, whatever it may be. Or Liefeld, or Leffeld, or Liefeld. Or Lefraud, no, that's not it. Um, art's hard, especially when you need to do a lot of it quickly. That said, I wonder whether he does that thing, because, like, I have occasionally, and by occasionally I mean a few days ago, um, gotten myself to the point where I was in the final stages of, like, you know, colouring and shading and all that sort of stuff, a thing. And as you're doing it, you look at it and go, hang on, that structurally that doesn't make sense. But I'm at the point now that it's far too much work to change any structure. It's like, I, I'm now down to tone. And that's it. It's too far gone. And you have to work on this thing you know is wrong. And it's, argh, that hurts. He must have that all the time. Because Anatomy and Rob Liefeld, not, uh, not close friends at the very least. Uh, hang on, the bottom of the jack is like this. Okay. Uh, right, what's going on? Um... <laughs> Hello, Dark, how you doing? Um... Right, we have one vote for put in nose filters, then try to burn up gas. Uh, one for don't inhale smoke, close box, put nose plugs in nose, and open box again. Um... One for use nose plugs, one for use nose filters, and nose filters, fuck you, Chibi, I was right. Um... I was thinking that as we were getting towards this part of the game. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, hurriedly and quickly, Pal closes the box to stop anything more getting out, sticks in the nose filters. Um, fortunately, they managed to filter out any sort of poisonous substance um, that may possibly have affected them. Um, let me actually read what the book says. That would be handy. Getting used to making these things up. Um, your eyes begin to water, um, but to no particular damage. Um, and after a while you can breathe easily in this weird yellow smoky haze the, sm the smoke slowly clears and makes its way outside of the cave um, and yeah as it starts to fade away you yeah you feel better it's fine no harm done uh, the nose filters have lost their magical potency and as a consequence you can't use them anymore um, but you do notice that when you open the box more, when you open the box, more gas comes out. Um, you don't know how much is left in there, um, but you don't really want to chance it, and you can't see anything else in there. So, yeah. So let me just take the nose filters out of your inventory because you've used them. Um, although you do still have two small plug-like things, so I'll, I'll keep those there. You can't use them to filter out toxic stuff anymore, but that it's there. Um, <clears throat> what do you want to do? Do you want to keep the box? Do you want to leave it where it is? Do you want to throw away the rest of the nose filters? Do you want to pick up the torch that's on the floor? Um, or do you want to just leave? And just leave. 
What I should do is I, sh I should take all of the items that have like a magical potency that's a one-time use. I should give them like a, a magical background um, to their icon and then have a non-magical version if you just want to keep the thing as it is. So for example, the rope of climbing. Like once it's done helping you out of a scrape, you can still use it as a rope, you know? Is cook. What? <laughs> Oh, cook oobs. <laughs> Kira, you're very good at getting the grammar correct. Oh, I suppose you can just copy paste, aren't you? Yeah. Didn't think of that. Oh. <laughs> uh, too willing to give people credit for things that are very easily explained otherwise. <laughs> no, <really? clears I don't know, don't know where that would go. <laughs> that kind of makes sense. No, I don't. Um. A little better. <clears throat> Max. <laughs> right, do not open on box. <laughs> but I just hope you don't want to uh, trick anything into opening it later. Um, you have a past typed it all out to match others, but you've since learned that it's possible to copy and paste even when on mobile. Marvelous. Took me a while to work it out. Right, so generally speaking, people want to keep the box. Uh, grab a torch. So let me just stick the torch back in your inventory. Um, you take the opportunity to light it because it takes a while to light these things. You might as well have it ready. Um, and you stick, the, yeah, stick the box back in your uh, in your backpack. And yeah, head on out. You have successfully managed to find half of the hammer, which is the goal of the trip. So. You're moving it on out. Where are you going? Uh, again, just as a quick reminder, we are currently in a road heading north. Um, we are palace here. Uh, we can continue heading north, or we can go back to this crossroads here, or we can go and see the things by the evil lady's house, or by the trees, by another place by the trees, out in the plains, um, by some crop circles, daffodils, this thing. Um, there's lots of places we can go. Good job! Congratulations! This is stream number seven, and we are technically halfway. <laughs> Although, who knows how long it's going to take to find the other one. And whether or not you will succeed, because you only have four provisions left. We have North 5 ever. Nerf, continue heading north. <clears throat> what a surprise, Kiro was the one who wrote in. <laughs> Actually wrote in English. Um, okay, we continue north. I think that's... Most people have said north in one way or another. So, we continue north. Let me find out what page that's supposed to be. Um, right.
Okay, right. Um, Powell continues north. You need to start cooking enemies for provisions. I mean, you did take the blood eel, um, and I gave you the opportunity to cook that when you got to a fire. Um, unfortunately, you managed to use both halves of it before you... <laughs> um... Yeah, that's pretty accurate, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we can do something like that in the future, but we won't be able to do it with things like, you know, goblins and such. Because that's not healthy. Um... Okay, so... Pal leaves the cave, um... Happy with their newfound, um... Acquisitions. Um... Uh... Yeah. And continues north to see what's going on, um, in an attempt to avoid the slightly awkward confrontation that they would have to have with the hobgoblins down south. Um... Pal continues to walk along a path. The uh, dense trees begin to thin out ever so slightly. Um, however, they do not uh, thin out quite enough to allow the light for Pal to notice a rope noose hidden between some leaves ahead of them. Uh, their foot gets caught in the noose and suddenly a Pal is hauled into the air by the rope, which is tied to a, a sprung tree. Um, in a second, they are hanging upside down, suspended by their trapped foot. Um, I need you to roll for your luck. Roll 2d6, try and get under your luck. Uh, that's a nine. That's too much. Um, you are unlucky, and as a consequence, your sword uh, falls out of the scabbard and falls to the ground. Um, so you have... You do not have your sword to cut yourself free. Um, yeah, you're hanging there for a bit. Uh, do you want to do anything while you're hanging there, or do you want to wait until uh, whatever set the trap comes along to see what's in it? Helmet stays on, fortunately. It's been dented enough to the shape of your own head that it's not going to come off easily. Uh, actually, roll for luck again. This is just for my own personal satisfaction. I have also slightly amended the rules for these things, um, because I don't feel like you should lose luck if you're not successful. <clears throat> uh, okay, you um, not only does your sword um, fall from your scabbard, but your recorder falls from your pocket as well. Um, so you don't even have that to keep you company. The very, very fortunate and lucky number. That doesn't spell any kind of doom or...
<laughs> you are pal's intrusive thoughts again we I, I think we've discussed this you are you are the collective psyche of pal pal is a rather confused little friend Uh, I've got I've got a rotating fan going on in my room at the moment and it's just so nice when it eventually comes back around to me. There you get the idea. Um, right, what's happening? Um, not pals floppy ears, at least when I do. I, I floppy. Um, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Look, at least I had the foresight not to continue. Because stupid innocent old me would not have seen it coming otherwise, and yeah. I like drawing things that have secondary motion, let's put it that way. There's a nice sort of... yeah. I'm not particularly good at it, but <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, there's pockets in here as well, isn't there? Probably where the recorder fell out of. Right, um. Cool, so what have we got? We have uh, cut the rope with the arrowhead. Um, one for sad dooting, one for trying to cut the rope with the with an arrow, and one for saw through rope with arrow. Um, the arrow is basically a sharpened piece of wood. Um, you got it from. depending on which one <laughs> it is. Um, either from some gremlins who just, you know, very crudely carved a bit of wood, or some hillmen who aren't particularly sophisticated. Um, so you attempt to cut your way through quite a thick rope with a sharpened stick, and to no, to no avail, you don't really get through. Um, the filter of the blood from your shoulder doesn't necessarily help in keeping the sharpness of the stick, but um, yeah. <clears throat> if it can, it can puncture flesh when fired from a bow, yes. Um, but that doesn't mean it can cut a rope. Draws arrows with arrowheads. Look, I I forgot when I drew them that they are just bits of wood. I remember the descriptions in the book that say they are just bits of wood. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, burn the rope with the torch, then? I mean, I didn't say you dropped the torch. That makes sense. <laughs> Should probably draw that. Um...
Yeah, this this, this isn't going to end well if you stay here for too long. <laughs> You're going to get some burns. Uh, <laughs> Set self on fire. <laughs> Look, we currently have two votes for set self on fire. Uh, <laughs> just wait until the weight wears uh, through the ropes after years and years of friction. I, th I think the assumption is that whatever set the trap, given that it was still primed and ready to go, um, is probably wasn't that long ago, and whatever set it will come along eventually. Whether or not it was after something like you, or whether it was just after rabbits, is uh, something to uh, only hope for. Let me just read some stuff while I'm waiting for you guys to do things. Okay, cool, cool. I am aware of things, situations now. Um, chew off own leg. Um, <laughs> you stay there for several days and several nights chewing off your own leg. Um, it eventually falls to the ground with a thud um, before you realise it was the wrong one. Um, so, what are we doing? Um, Burn the rope, not pound your dinguses, saw through rope with arrow, self-immolation, burn through rope with torch. There are two votes for setting self on fire and two for setting the rope on fire. Um, gonna have to have a tiebreaker. <laughs> I think it was 127 hours or something like that. Fine, set rope on fire. <laughs> Look, I have to follow your instructions, however mad they may be. <laughs> pal has got some issues to work through. Um, okay, so... Bad news, oh no, did the recipe not work? Oh, bread baby. That's why you needed the milk. Um... Right, uh, so Pal reaches up with a torch and burn through it and they fall to the ground with a thud um, luckily not falling on the sword nor indeed breaking the recorder um, everything remains intact um, with the possible exception of pal's dignity although at this point there's not an awful lot of that to go around um, you'll continue to make bad decisions and hope no one goes with you on it well good luck <laughs> the smooching worked well, you, you finally got the smooch in last time so it's not all bad news um yeah, so you you fall to the ground, or Pal falls to the ground, and yeah, no no immediate sign of anything coming along to uh, to find out what was in a trap. Um, do you wish to stay and find out, or do you want to carry on? You're free. You can do what you like. So let me just update the map. Oh, there's an undo. Yeah. I'm learning about the uh, the UI of Clip Studio. on the wrong layer, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, hang on, let's, let's do this simply. Okay. Invert, cut. Paste. 
I, I literally have two layers and I always do it on the wrong one. <laughs> oh, silly of me. Um, oh, why is that there? That's silly. Cool, cool, cool. So what are we doing? We have two for grab chat and run north, one for move on, one for gather all dropped items and run north, and one for wait in ambush. Um, alas, we shall continue north and whatever it is that laid the trap shall arrive and have to set it up again because we we escaped. Um, hopefully they got another rope because we, we burnt this one. Um, right. Cool. You continue north. The unluckiest goblin you've seen them and you've seen them set themselves on fire. It's... It, yeah. Uh, right. So you continue north to... It's been a while since we've had a crossroads. Do we have a crossroads? Let me look at my map, make sure I'm going in the right place. Right, cool. <clears throat> you continue north. <clears throat> right. Um, as you continue north, the, the trees are thinning out, as I say, and a little more light is poking through, and some of the trees are getting larger, thicker. Um, presumably getting more light means they can grow a little stronger. Um, Pal notices that on uh, one of the trees, or hanging down from one of the trees, is a knotted vine. Uh, leading up. Um, Pal looks up to see that there's a roughly made treehouse in the branches of the tree above. Um, do you wish to investigate or do you wish to continue? So you come across a treehouse up above the forest floor with some knotted vines leading up to it. Savage? What? Who? What? As to whether or not they have more rope they can use might be they can use might be that rope that's just sharpened wood good for nothing. What? Who? What? Burn tree house. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just confused. As usual. Um... Miss your never been. It's fine. All you have to do is look at the stuff that Try gets away with and say, oh yeah, I'm not me. <laughs> Oh, making fun of my wooden arrowheads. Look, it's... I messed up. I believe I said at the time that we picked them up that they were just made of wood, but my illustration was poor. I could very easily modify this picture so that the rope is... I, I flip Pal the other way up and then they're climbing. It's, uh... uh... I'm just going to investigate how this goes forwards before I start drawing anything. If we do wish to investigate this. I think I know what's in store, but... Uh... It does sound familiar about the arrows. Again, it's like they, they don't have the wherewithal to... Uh... I mean, for a start, if they did actually have, like, flint heads or something like that, getting it out of your shoulder is going to be a bit of an issue, isn't it? Um, well, I suppose they could have, like, a smoothed flint head rather than a sharp back one. Could have got lucky. Death is in store. Really? They never seem to run out of stock, do they? Um... Sorry, I'm just reading ahead. <clears throat> I 
Oh, bugger, I think I lost the page that we were on. Um, I'm always doing this, but this is why I keep track and keep a record so that I know exactly where to go. I can go back there right now. Right, okay, so what are we doing? We are. Going to either two votes for quietly investigate the treehouse, one for burn treehouse, one for play recorder until inhabitants of the treehouse fall out of it with bleeding ears, and one for quietly investigate treehouse as our record is not great. Um, is that record or recorder? Mm. Um, all look at treehouse from afar, then remember that everything in this world hates you and wants you dead. Um, I think, generally speaking, we're going to quietly investigate the treehouse. So, um, Pal tests the rope, finds it sturdy enough to carry their weight, um, which is not particularly difficult, and uh, climbs up the vine to uh, very tentatively see what's there. Um, what do they see? Uh, they reach the top of the vine and look into a simple wooden platform. It's sort of difficult to see what's in the treehouse from where they are, so they make their way up onto the platform. Um, the entrance is uh, covered in leaves and ferns to make a sort of makeshift curtain. Um, and so Pal pulls the curtains open and peers inside. As they peer inside, they see the face a face staring back at them of a large, hairy, ape-like creature wearing only animal hide and a loincloth. Um, <clears throat> they are holding a large bone in their right hand and they grunt at you menacingly. They wish you ill will. It is an ape man. What do you want to do? I now have to work out how to draw an ape man. Um, this is the, uh, the makeshift curtain. Oh, I'm gonna look up some reference images. I have no idea what I'm drawing right now, but uh, <laughs> here we go. Part of the uh, part of the charm of streaming is I haven't drawn many things in my life, and so I have to do them live. Uh, <laughs> Kind of hard to do a a snarl when the snarl is sort of depicted by how close 
the top lip gets to the eye when the actual jaw is quite low down on primates. Um, this is an ape man, so they're wearing like a suit. They've just finished doing like a PG Tips commercial or something. Drew fashion this ponytail. Who's dead? What? Who? The world is full of scoundrels and monsters. Uh, the nice could never survive. That's why we have civilization. Niceness begets help, and help is beneficial. <clears throat> Otherwise, we'd still be individual hunters and gatherers with no society whatsoever. Um, yes, they are holding a club. That which they bought only that day from the local outlet. Remind me why I drew this in a suit? I can't remember. Just because it's ape man. So I like try and find some way of making it man. Um I should I should probably make this in some way. Fantasy esque. I mean I did give the ogre bunny slippers, so it's really no going back, but uh Try and make this a bit more fantastical. Or less less uh modern in its accoutrement. Hello, Davy M36. How are you doing? Um, right. So, yeah, this thing's here. What are we doing with it? It has a club. Let's make it a wooden club. I always make it look like I'm made of stone. Uh, isn't it a bone club? Oh, shush. It's not even a club. It's just a bone, I think it said. It's the bone of a tree. Um, no, it's a bone. Okay. And there's still some... bit of flesh hanging off it. Why not? Uh, that still works. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I said bone, yes, yes, I'm, yeah. That, that, they did also buy that from the local outlet, though. There was a butchery there, it's very pleasant. Right, what are we doing? Uh, we have two for hello, smiles and waves. Hello. Um, we have one for communicate with food. One for run away from the angry ape man. One for saucily wink at our new bone daddy. The things you make me say. One for set it on fire. And one for run the hell away from the thing that can tear us in two. So we have two for run away. One for saying hello. One for trying... Oh, sorry. Two for saying hello. Um... Or three if we count the saucy wink. <clears throat> Generally speaking, we seem to want to communicate in some fashion. Um, he's an ape in a loincloth and a bone. Look, I didn't say he was only in a loincloth. We can't see from this angle whether or not there is also a loincloth there. So... Um, Yeah, I try and make these interesting. <laughs> and I fail. Um, right, so, what are we doing? There was a, a change to vote for Runaway, so... Hello, communicate with food. Runaway, Runaway, Runaway. So three Runaways, three Communicate, in some way. Um, and one for Set It On Fire. We need a tiebreaker. Are we going to communicate or are we going to run away? One thing I will say is that you've just climbed up a rope. Running away is going to be possibly dangerous um, <clears throat> tell you what hang on Auto save, slowing me down a tad. And there we are. There's the loincloth. Nobody mentioned that it was on the loins. It's just there. It's wearing it. Um. Vote smile sweetly, back away slowly, and climb back down rope, and then che cheese it north. <laughs> Um, run away, run away, smile, run away, run away. Okay, so people are generally saying leave. Um, right, so Pal attempts to back away carefully, smiling, um, trying not to aggravate it, but the ape, ape man is clearly not happy um, with this invasion of privacy and lunges at you with the bone. Um, Pal clambers down the rope as best they can, um, and I'd like you to roll for luck. If you'd be so kind. 2d6, please. <laughs> Marvellous. Um, right. You lose your grip going down the rope um, and plummet to the floor below. Um... Fortunately, you land on your backpack and survive. There's no sharp sticks at the bottom or anything like that. Um, but you do take three points of stamina damage over the course of it. Um, do we wish to continue north? But yes, we've lost a bit of health. Um, you don't break anything. Nothing in your backpack gets broken. Um, fortunately, you don't break the silver box, which would have raised a cloud of gas, which would have been unpleasant. Um, but yeah, you just take you take damage because... Um, three points, so that's down to 16. Like that, and there we are. And we have jumped away <laughs> from the ape. There we are. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it was funny. Um, let's do it.
Right, so you make your ignominious exit. Um, and flomp down onto the floor. Uh, the ape man does not follow. Um, so you are now free to do as you so desire. You can go back up and face them if they, if you wish. Um, although I wouldn't wouldn't fancy your chances of getting back up there without getting hit. Um, there you. Go. What do you want to do now? Okay, that's a new one. And I get emails from Humble Bundle um, when they have new bundles and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> occasionally they do books, and I've just been informed via email that they have a My Little Pony bundle. And I'm like, well, that's in my inbox now. Yippee. Um, yeah, I should go through Humble Bundle. I've, I have a few bundles where I haven't taken all of the keys from it, and I have occasional duplicate games. It'd be nice to give some of you those. Um, brony, that's a word I haven't heard in bloody ages. That was a thing on the internet once, wasn't it? Um, wipe tears from eyes, brush self off and limp northwards. Aww. Poor pal. What's Humble Bundle? Humble Bundle is a website where... Originally, they would get lots of bundles of games and they would sell them at reduced prices and you can allocate the amount of money that you spend on those bundles to go towards a specific charity of your choice or a variety of charities. Um, they also have recently set up, recently, it's about a year or two ago, um, <clears throat> they've set up a storefront where they just sell games and you do a similar thing with a charity split and all that sort of stuff, um, I think. So it's just a kind of alternative to Steam now, but they also do bundles and they have regular sales. I tend to like buying through them more so than Steam, um, even though it is Steam codes usually. Uh, there's also GOG and various other places where you can get stuff. So yeah, I bought something from GOG the other day, actually. Uh, an old Call of Cthulhu game, which the Steam version is awful, apparently. The port is terrible, but the GOG version is good and it was extremely cheap. Because it was a game from 2006, but I still want to play it. <laughs> uh, if you press you enough, you will break out into the Discord song. Discord song? I don't really wish to know. Anyway, um, <clears throat> you attempt to set the, the tree on fire, but the Forest of Doom is rather hardy to these sorts of things, and as a consequence it's very, very difficult to get anything to set on fire um, that isn't already long dead. The tree has been alive and standing there for quite some time. Um, in the process, the ape man is looking down at you trying to set its treehouse on fire and is throwing things at you in the, um, to try and get you to go away. Um, it succeeds, you realise, um, trying to set the tree on fire is to no avail, but um, and as a consequence you head northwards once more. North, north, north. <clears throat> Let's fill in this map a little bit. Um, while I'm, while you're filling in this map, I will give you a choice because I'm pretty sure I know what's coming up next. Sorry, you tried to set it on fire, but you didn't, didn't succeed. Alas. Um, well, I, I actually went through with your thing. Just because Pal didn't succeed, it's not my fault. Um, right. So you head north. Here we are. Uh, soon the path leads out of the trees and onto a large plain which you've been to before. Um, where are we? Yes. Beyond it you see rising ground to the hills uh, where you were attacked by hillmen before. Um, and further off hills, etc. Uh, the path splits and goes in three directions. You can continue uh, north or you can go east or you can go west. Um, let me look at my thing. Temporarily. 
Um, where are we? So there's that, there's that. Um, I think we're there. Okay, so I... You can see from various landmarks that you've been to before. Um... that this links up with the path that you saw just after the tree men previously so that's the uh, that's the western route and that you can continue north from here into the plains or you can start going to the west I suppose the trees actually sort of go on under here because I messed up the map a little bit Pal's not here anymore. Let me just bunch things up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, yes, I should actually give you a clean vote. There's the slimy hole. I can probably hazard a guess as to which cardinal direction you'll choose in this particular instance, but here we are. Um, and then there's Treehouse. Um, at this crossroads, you see um, a large pile of bones littering the ground where uh, presumably the ape man has been throwing their refuse somewhere away from the uh, the treehouse. They're a bit smelly. Some flies flying around it. I did. Um, oh, hello. That's not what I was expecting. Oh, it's east, not west, isn't it? Yeah. I'm an idiot. Um, it's west. Okay, so we're going to head east. Happy to head east. Um, and by head east, I mean probably end the stream. Um... But we, Pal can head off east and then we'll find out what's there um, at the beginning of the next stream. Um, actually, before we do that, I'll give you I'll give you the opportunity not to uh, not to have the end of this stream be boring um, by going. Okay, we're gonna head east. Everyone wants to go east, so we'll go east. Um, other than trees, yep, that's where we're going. So we want to go to there. What do we find to the east? Well, we find a junction that goes north or south. <laughs> that's why I thought I wouldn't end it there. <laughs> now I bet I can guess which direction you want to go. Um, what's here? What What's at this intersection? What could be... Uh, let me see what's around it, and then have some fun context clues and such. Um... Okay, there's lots of... Yeah, it's just... Uh, this is an area of, of very long grass. So sort of sticking up. There's some more smaller bones lying around. Just, yeah, very tall grass. There was like some lots of very tall grass up here, I think. Yeah, here. <laughs> In and around the barbarian, because that's where you hid. Um, but uh, here, yes, yeah, lots of... This is the grass intersection. <clears throat> Pokemon! Oh yes, that was the... Yeah, you wanted to catch a Pokemon. I forgot about that. <laughs> So let's sort this map out, because I'm pretty sure this is actually supposed to go under here, but you get the idea. So 
so yeah, these are the planes here. This is particularly long patch of grass at the side. Because the trees are too dense to continue heading east, so you now have the option to go north. Um, we have two votes for north and one for snorth. Um, any votes for Norg? Who knows? Okay, we're heading north. Right. Well, on that note, let me just bookmark the page. There we go. Pal heads north. And... <laughs> Vote Norg. The, the only reason I say that is because as I was going through these things um, from the last time, I, I found that. I forgot about that. Um... <laughs> so yes, Pal continues to head north. Um, in search of wonders and treasures and such. Keep doing that. Hang on. There, there we go. Okay, so. Pal's very excited to see what happens next time on the Forest of Doom draw through. Um, so what did we do today? We, um, we found the handle of the hammer. We are halfway there. Um, we got caught in a trap, <clears throat> um, which we burnt our way out of. We then jumped off a tree once we saw an ape in a suit because it was quite surprising. Um, and that was about it, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we almost suffocated. That was the thing. Um, yeah. And basically, our cartography. Yeah, you're, you're plotting out this route. No one else has managed to plot out this route before. But then again, it's the Forest of Doom. So anyone who comes along here later, the whole place will probably change because it's, it's a living, breathing place. It's sort of weird. Um, you killed an ogre. I forgot about that. Yes, there was a, an epic fight. Um, and you didn't take the slippers. Emily wanted to take the slippers, but you didn't choose to. Oh well. You can always go back. So. Um, let's go to the thing. Like that. Um, oh no, like that. Yes. Good art by Miss. Um, you can see the whole thing on Miss's Twitter, as it says on the screen. Um, I've cut off a lot on this one because I like to do close-ups. And there's a lot of detail here. Um, if you want to know more about the life of the ogre you killed. Um, no, you didn't take the slippers. Uh, Emily suggested it, but no one else. It, it didn't come through in the vote. You wanted to stay, eat some provisions, and then check the box. And then once you've done the box, you close the box and left. That's that's what you wanted me to do. Oh, you picked up the torch as well. That is a thing that did happen. Um. So yeah, very good art. Good art. Excellent art. Hang on, that does mean that. Miss, because I didn't do the stream last week, that means Miss didn't miss one. That's cool. That's fun. Um, <laughs> but we want slippers. I mean, yeah, you can. There's nothing stopping you going back and grabbing them because there's nothing in the way. But um, you might get a, a rock thrown at your head by the ape man. But other than that, uh, yeah. It's the first thing you said before exploit. You said it, but you didn't vote it. That's the thing. Look back on the VOD. Give me a screenshot if you can find it. Um, don't burn me. It's fine. It means you've only missed one stream so far. Uh, I don't think you missed any because I'm on... Seven now? Yeah, this is the seventh one. I, I think you've, you've got on them all. I don't think you missed any. I mean, you, no, no, because you even did one for the character creation, didn't you? I can't remember. I'm bad. Um, I've kept them all. I'll look through them, see if... <laughs> you posted one after the stream? I mean, that still counts. I don't expect you to get it done before the stream. Like... Anyway. Um, don't cook me. I'm sensitive to heat. That is true. I hate heat. Um, same night but after a stream. That's, that's fine. Miss, stop! Don't say that doesn't count. I made you this piece of art, but it was it was slightly later than I intended it to be. Still works, and don't turn that round on me. Um, but thank you everyone for coming along. Um, I felt like this one was sort of more. I I drew more fun things this time. Um, pal being upside down, smushing his face into the floor. Um, fluffy head gremlin, not gremlin goblin. There's there's a difference. Um, yeah. So, the music ended, which is nice. <laughs> Forgot about that. 
Um, so that means I should find some nice outro music. Um, oh, okay. Apparently Jake Young just followed me on Twitter. That's uh, interesting for two reasons. One, why? And two, I thought he already was. Because I remember thinking, why would he follow me? <laughs> he unfollowed me at some point and now he's following me again. Uh, <laughs> it's nice though. Uh, yeah, sad, sad to hear his seemingly forced departure from Dorkley. That's unfortunate. He was one of the... Him and Tony were the... Oh, no, it's Tristan as well. But you know what I mean. Anyway. Um, music, that's what I was going to do. I've, I've had iTunes open this whole time. That's been sucking RAM. There's a sentence. Um, uh, hang on, you don't want to see it. What can you see? I don't know if you can see things. No, you can't. Okay, cool. Um, I can move things around. I have complete freedom. Seems odd, but it's sure he's doing fine. Hopefully. Seems like a nice guy. Um... I, just, I do actually have the vote thing here. So th these, these are the current votes. <laughs> North, cook the parsnip, suck ram, and we want slippers. There we go. Um, <laughs> this is what you have wrought. Uh, oh dear, no. Kiro, you made it worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's get some uh, ending music. Um, what's good ending music for these sorts of things? I wanted to buy a recorder and then like write a piece of music for Pal, but I've never played the recorder, and I'd like to buy a good one and then I'd never use it again, so it's kind of a waste of money. Um, I mean, we could do the Grim Outdoors from Rogue Legacy. That kind of makes sense. It's forest theme, but it's a bit weird. I don't know. There's only one type of recorder, cheap and plastic. I mean, you can get nice wooden ones, but uh, you made it better. <laughs> right, okay, let's uh, end the stream, and uh, you don't need to know about what I'm, music I'm choosing. So, yes, if I accidentally play um, Franz Ferdinand, which is currently on, that's my fault. But until then, have a wonderful time, everybody. Enjoy yourselves. Be good, be kind. Be Do, do no worse than pal. That's the aim. Um, don't kill ogres. Unless you really have to, because you've got to find a hammer. Have a wonderful time. Goodbye.